Okay, my name is um, Lyle Hendricks. Most of the people will know me through a movie that I've made, El Dorado, uh, in 2009. El Dorado was um, quite a hit. Uh, I played a character, Bobos. And I've seen that many of the TikTok um, trends nowadays, they're coming back with my one of my uh, uh, organized scenes there and I felt, well, people must wonder where I've been, what's happened and all of that. So basically I'm here to give my fans to say I'm still alive and I appreciate the fact that they're still listening and watching to my, um, my movies that I've made. But basically, I also want to tell you guys about um, my experience that I've had in the past with um, my um, life. So basically I was born in Port Elizabeth in Livingston Hospital 1980. My mom is from Port Elizabeth, my dad is from Eldorado Park, Johannesburg. Yes, they hooked up and okay, I was born. I, um, we moved to Johannesburg, I think 1983. I lived in the f extension 4 by the flats and as I grew up in the 80s, Eldorado Park was all about gangsterism. We as the youngsters, what we saw around us was guys dying, battlefields, gangsters attacking each other, cutting each other, you know, all the things, and um, it was a rough place. In my teenage years, I, I, how can I say, I went through a phase because I lived in a home where it was really a bit abusive. My dad was a bit stressy, so um, I used to beat my mom. And um, okay, I grew up in it, but in my teenage years, once at school, the teacher talked about domestic violence and abuse. So then I started to understand what was happening. And um, I couldn't actually talk it out. So my mom recommended, okay, if you, you can't talk, rather write your things. I took the advice, I started to write in a journal, everything, every day in a journal. Eventually, I started to get the liking into poetry. Okay, poetry, yeah, it was nice, because now I could rhyme and play with my friends, say, you know, like Shakespeare. And then when I opened my eyes again, I was starting rapping with guys, you know. So when I was like, um, when I opened it now, really, I was like already battling people, you know. So it took away lots of the pain that I uh, encountered at home. And um, yeah, um, but um, unfortunately, you know, if you have that in your heart, if you're a youngster, and you know, you can't talk it out, because, you know, back then and now, it's not the same. Because um, back then, you must, if you were a kid, you must be quiet. And when uh, you say you uh, talk anything, it's like you're rude. So for me, it was more, okay, let me put it into all the anger into my music, but it didn't work. So I started smoking weed, you know, became a rebellious kid. Um, okay, we were average, but um, the money, I needed more money. So I started to hustle, and um, I would uh, like uh, put on my school clothes, and then, yeah, in my backpack there's no books. I have my car stealing tools in there. But, okay, we start to tape decks and everything. Okay, it was all right. Okay, the home things were going on, I would sideline give my mom money. She kept quiet and everything. 
Okay, um, in 99, I decided, no, don't want to go to school anymore. My friends dropped out, we were right, you know. It wasn't now the perfect life. Okay, I'm a mom and dad, one day they came to me, they said, listen, Buddha, you must now decide, what do you want? Do you want to go to school or work? First of all, you don't have my trick where you're gonna get to work. And number two, if you don't have work, you're not gonna love here. Okay, I started to think, hey, if I steal, because the guys are dying, and me, I don't wanna die. And I thought, okay, the rap, okay, this career, it can't just go on now. I said, okay, now let me go away to my granny in PE. I went that side. Okay, with the rapping, I never rap in front of a crowd, you know? So PE, when I got there, um, in a couple of uh, months, I started to DJ. So the DJing allowed me to, 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 to actually get that confidence to do the rapping in front of people and all of that. And um, I started to have fans. <laughs> Back in the day, they had cassettes and things, and people, as I was rapping, you know, were like one week, two songs, then maybe next week two songs. Eventually I rotated it. And then the normal people would like, know the choruses, know the choruses. Hey, okay, now cool. But also the other thing at the same time, my mom, she um, got bre um, breast cancer. So it was also a bit difficult for me to focus because I was also, you know, thinking, no, I'm not going back to Joburg. Nope. I'm going further, either Cape Town or in from Cape Town, maybe America, wherever, you know. But okay, I had to come back. I came back in uh, 2002. Okay, you know when you come back from a place with all, with all your heart and mind open for anything, come back to the same life again, you know. Nothing has changed that time, okay, besides not the fact my mom was sick. Okay, now my dad knew he can't, he can't actually um, abuse her so much, so it was basically me again, you know. And um, okay, I worked my first job after I finished my matric was about, I got, well, I worked in a blinds place and I installed, you know, the blinds for the windows. Yeah, but I got like, what, 20 rand a day. Uh, <laughs> Okay, that was 2002. 2002, I, I entered a competition in the other other part. It was the first talent um, con uh, competition. Yeah, and I came third place. Yeah, actually the judges there, they, I think they didn't judge me right because the crowd said I'm number one. But okay, there was a Mariah and a Whitney and there was me. <laughs> Then I call myself Freaky Flow. Actually, not myself. People called it because of the way when I spit it, like, yeah, bro, yeah, you flow, and yeah, that runs is freaky, you know. So okay, but now then 2003 came, and um, yeah, that was not the time my mom passed away. Yeah, it was like uh, you know, if you know if you if you're young and you know you have ambition to say I'm gonna take my mom out of the situation, I'm gonna give her everything that. I can, it's like my whole life crumbled, you know. I didn't know where to next, you know. So from there, okay, in 2004, I met um, Wizard and um, Nate Skills. They had a production company, uh, Mixed Breed. By then I was also um, rapping with an old homeboy of mine, oh, Chucky Smith, he's a, a tattoo artist as well. Okay, so we, signed up with Mixed Breed. Okay, um, at one gig in El Dorado Park, there was this one MC, they call him Smurra, he's also acting in the movie as Seth. Uh, Jay Smith is his name. So um, him and him, we were talking and um, I told him, yo, we can start a group. So we, we formed the group Black Cream. B-L-A-Q Cream. The black was basically, people always ask, why Black Cream? You know, if you take coffee, then milk, when you mix it, it makes a, uh, it becomes lighter, lighter. So basically it's colored in a nice way to say, okay, now it's a mixture from dark to light in between, you know? Yeah, so Black Cream, we, our first CD that we made was a 
poison concentration camp. Poison concentration camp, um, our fans loved it, but it was banned because um, the CD, we spoke about all the, the political, real issues, the, the unfairness of the police, um, the unfairness for colored people, you know, in the industry, the marginalizing and all of that. But um, yeah, the CD was banned and then okay. Me, I always believed they must have money. So I was always in between working and you understand. So at that time, when, um, when I, uh, yeah, we done our first CD after that, my thing was I want to just get out of the house. You know, my dad was still maybe very frustrated. So I said, no, okay. Okay, with one of my jobs, then after that, I left the job. I got another better one. Okay, then I, went, I met my um, ex-wife. Okay, we started loving together. And um, because I was also very still immature and still in between of still being um, this rapper. But um, I, uh, on the one hand, you have to have the responsibility life. So I was still immature and all that. So when I shot uh, El Dorado in 2009, okay, now after El Dorado, my fame started. So now people were now starting to recognize me as Bobos. And then, you know, the stamp millis and boinkies, I want the stamp millis and boinkies and all that. Yeah, then all of a sudden people were now starting to ask for autographs and, hey, you know, um, a little fame, it can make your mind change, you know? And um, yeah, and uh, how can I say? Then after that, I shot another movie, B Section. I played another character, Ricky. Um, after B Section, then I said, no man. One time I had double ammonia. I said, before I die, I want to make a CD again. So I started to work in the studios. But now also with all the stress, I used to start to drink a lot. And um, after that, when I found myself, I was into drugs started doing cat. Um, okay, the cat, the reason for that was because of the alcohol, it makes you but uh, how can I say, drunkish, the cat boosts you up again. So then, um, basically the cat got me hooked heavy. Yeah, and after that, okay, done the music, I focus, finished about the one mi mixtape, and then um, I lost my one, the job that I had at that moment. I said, okay, I don't care. Okay, the CDs, I started to sell my CDs. I sold it, sold it, but also with fa uh, my family life went out. You know, everything, you know, never being around too much and weekends, um, not even coming home. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, m m uh, we split up. Okay, that's when my downfall came. Depressed on the one side and, you know, the balance, I couldn't keep it anymore. You know, people will always say, yo, drugs, I, me. I use the drug, the drug doesn't use me. Come and tell you one thing, nah. there's no such thing. The drug, any drug doesn't have a master. The drug is the master. So, as time went, um, I went so far that I became homeless. Uh, uh, lived in shelters around here, there. I've been into like rehabs in the past. And then, you know, sometimes when you still have you know, an old, um, let me say, old, like a, a, a weed in your garden that is still there. You can plant how many beautiful new flowers. If you don't remove that weed, it will still destroy that flower. So that was what happened. I never actually had opportunity to speak out about my past, what, you know. So um, then I fi finally said, no, man, I needed more um, encouragement. And I found it through. God, you know, God basically gave me the light to, sh to see where my problems were lying. And um, like I said, when I started to now see people are doing the trends on TikTok about my one movie, I said, no, man, let me rather go to the youth. I want to do a school tour where I want to empower youth and tell them about the future in, in life. Because, like I, I've seen, people won't understand it, but people will be, especially youngsters, will be able to relate more to a stranger than someone that is close to them. 
So for myself, I've said, okay, I'm going to do this tour. So very soon, I will be it at any school that um, anyone randomly. So I will advertise it before the time. And I hope you guys will appreciate the fact that I'm coming to empower your children. So please, parents, children, anyone, if you hear that I'm going to be in your town or school or whatever, if it's a possibility, I would also like the parents to either come in to the school for that day or I'll, I'll try to send it out via social media. But like I say, peace out and I appreciate the fact that there's still some fans that still remember me, Bobos, Van Eldos. Yes, and um, much love. Verwacht ik zo aan de plek kon blijven, wat je zo bij je kunt er moorden naar krijgen. Man, zo zie je een echt pastoor bij de keer, die kan even mijn om weer. Wie zal verwacht? Het kan van zes verkracht. Doe het gestiek met de mes in die dag. En die politie rijdt voorbij. Hulle is zo tijd terwijl hulle hulle langs gehelde kruis. Ze zei mij, wat is een rechte man? Een persoon wat aan de vrouw goed kan slaan. Als ons allemaal net samen kan staan, dan zal ons het maken. Ik zal nog altijd bij praat van die uselisse staat. Als je met mij is, dan vat je mijn hand. Al lopen samen dier in land, kant in kant. Met een versterkte verstand, ik kan het nog nooit ooit vergaan. Als ons allemaal net samen staan. Als ons allemaal net samen staan.